the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amitti, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. He found a ship, somebody say a ship, going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof. He went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Uh, for a thought, today I just want to ask you a question um, that I hope that many of you will consider at the end of this um, message, and that you will use this to evaluate your present circumstances when you deal with people who you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. But today, just for a title, I want to ask the question, what's the direction of your ship? This generation is the relationship generation. I say that all the time when I preach. I say that all the time when I minister. I say this generation is the relationship generation. That's why if the dismantling of religious tradition does not occur in the church, we will lose this generation. Amen. Because this generation is not coming for a, a, a practice or coming just, just to be doing it out of formality or, or because I have to. This generation, when we come to church, we want to be able to talk and hear from a living God. Understand that Amen. in order to move forward in God, that there has to be a word. There has to be a word. In the beginning of this text, it says that now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. What I need every one of you to understand in here is that you are all created by the word of God. Amen. All right? In Genesis, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And then it says, male, male and female, he created them. He created you off of his word. You are the uh, you are you are simply a manifestation of a word God spoke. So for every person in here, you got to understand that God has not forgotten about you. It's not like He don't know you. He knows you because He had to say something for you to come. Y'all follow me? And so you have to understand now that the word, yes, the word is my source of creation. But then also, if you look uh, further down in Matthew, you will understand that not only is the word of God your, your, your uh, source of creation, but it's the source of life. Because the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So there's a progressive word that any at any time of your life, if you start listening to God, you can find out what you should be doing in that moment. Even when you're in that club, even when you're out doing stuff you ain't got no business doing, if you just start listening, no matter how low you get, how hard it starts to look, even how great it is, if you start to listen, there's always a proceeding word coming out of God's mouth. It didn't say that man shall live by the word that came from God's mouth or the word that was once spoken out of God's mouth. It said there's a proceeding word, which means that God is always speaking. Always speaking. Y'all follow me? I got you. All right. And so the Bible says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amitti, saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city. Now, what happens now when there's a great word over your life? When God starts speaking about you, uh, about some great things in your life. And see, what happens is, I don't understand it. I really don't. I don't understand sometimes how we can get a great word from God. God says, go do something. He starts speaking to you concerning greatness. And the first thing we do when we rebel against a word of God is we go find a ship. Relationships. Come on. Friendships. Come on. Companionships. 
How come it is that every time we want to rebel against the word of God, we go get some relationships? So you have to understand that God created relationships as, as a, uh, that's what it is. It's a ship. It's supposed to take you somewhere. The people that are in your life should be taking you somewhere. The question is, what's the direction of this ship? Y'all with me? All right, let me give you some proof right now because I know you're looking at me like Chris, this ain't me, but let me, let me just help you out. 53% of teens who are involved with a boyfriend or girlfriend say their relationship causes them stress. <laughs> you a teenager and you stressed out because of who you decide to hang out with. <laughs> you ain't got a bill. You ain't got nothing. But you stressed out. Cause she don't like my hair, or she talk about me, or she wouldn't slap my boyfriend, and then this is fifty three percent, fifty three percent. That means that half of us up in here now are stressed out because of what somebody did. <sighs> don't worry, I ain't coming to condemn you. I came to help you out, so I'm gonna help you get out. A recent study commissioned by Liz Carbon also uncovered a very scary trend among abuse in teen relationships. According to the study, about 69% of teenagers have experienced some kind of abuse in relationship. 69% of teenagers have received some kind of abuse based on who they are in relationship with. Uh, you have to understand this, that uh, God called us to be a relationship generation. The enemy knows this. That's why what the enemy will do is he always gets a counterfeit. You got to understand. Okay. Y'all going to go with me real quick? Yeah. All right. This ain't just started now. This was happening in Genesis. The enemy's attack in Genesis was to get man to fall. Because you didn't see the response that God gave until Adam fell. Okay? So if he wanted to get Adam to fall, he went through Eve. Why? Because Eve was in relationship with Adam. So whenever anyone wants to try to get you off your course or try to cut, and what he does is you got to understand this. The enemy will present to you what looks like love, smells like love, feels like love, but it's just a counterfeit. And that's why I'm so glad that the Bible says over in John, Jesus is the light. So what you can do is, you know how they do at Walmart when you give them a $100 bill? What they do? They hold it up to the light to see if the image is there. I dare you to hold your relationships up to the light of Christ to see if there's an image of God in your relationship. Come on, somebody, y'all, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. I dare you to take your relationship and begin to hold it towards Christ and to see if there's an image of, of your destiny in that relationship. Oh, God. Because the enemy is going to try to give you a counterfeit presentation of what love is. These statistics are not love. But if you go up to these people and say, all right, 69% of it, I need all y'all to just get in a room. 69% of uh, teenagers, I want y'all to just get, because that's a big number. It's a lot of us. I don't know what they was doing back then, but they was making us. Amen? So I want y'all to all get into a room, and I'm going to ask y'all this question now. Why is 69% of you being abused and taking it? And you want to know what 50% of them will say? I don't know, but I love him. Oh. 